Hi, welcome to this video. Um, in this one, we're in particular, we are discussing a delta connected load, and um, we're actually going to talk about an unbalanced delta connected load. So unbalanced, right? We know that in order to be unbalanced, you either need a different power factor or different impedance, or both can be different, right? So in this case, we're dealing all of these resistors would have the same power factor, right? We know all resistors have a power factor of one and a phase angle of zero. The current and voltage is in phase for a resistor, but we'll say that each of these has a different ohmic value. So right here between A and B, we'll do 10 ohms. Between B and C, we'll do 20 ohms. And down here between C and A, we will do 30 ohms. So each of those has a different ohmic value. Now, we're going to kind of address this um, from the point of solving each phase, put them onto the phasor diagram, and then solving the line current. So what I've already done is I've already plotted my uh, phase voltages, at, which are, you know, equal to my line voltages. And I went ahead and I plotted these right away uh, because they're, they're constant. They're consistent within a... Um, delta circuit. So what I didn't say is let's call this a 240 volt uh, delta source. Well, I'm just going to write that down here. 240 volt. So it's a 240 volt uh, delta source, um, right? Meaning A to B, we see 240 volts. B to C, we see 240. C to A, we see 240. And then what we have for our voltages is Now we have 240 volts. Um, sorry. V A to B equals 240 volts at zero degrees. V B to C equals 240 volts at 240 degrees. And V C to A equals 240 volts at 120 degrees. So those are my three voltages that I see in this circuit, uh, and those are coming from my source. My next step that I'm gonna take into, or the next step that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solve for my phase currents, All right? So phase currents. Now, I'm just solving for the current within each phase. So it, it, right, we can think about this. We have, you know, 240 volts from A to B across this 10 ohm resistor. It's just like solving that load. So for each of our phase currents, we're going to use the exact same formula. In order to solve for I of the phase, we are going to go the voltage of the phase divided by the impedance in the phase, All right? So we're just using Ohm's law, volts of the phase divided by impedance of the phase. So pretty straightforward, right? Phase A, we know we have 240 volts. That's A to B. So I'm going to put I, A to B, right? What we're going to do is we're going to go 240 volts. That's my voltage divided by 10 ohms, which is my impedance, which ends up giving me 24 amps. Now, the trick here is that we know all of these loads, right? Every single one that we have here, our phase angle is zero degrees, right? Because they are a resistor, the relationship between voltage and current is that they are in phase with each other. And that's going to be on each phase. So where that matters is now when I'm determining where is this current phaser going to be, well, my theta is zero, my phase angle is zero, so it's going to be in phase with the voltage that created it. The voltage is at zero degrees, therefore my current will also be at zero degrees. Then we go on to phase B. So phase B, we'll go I, B to C, um, right? I, B to C, we have 240 volts and 20 ohms of resistance. So we go 240 divided by 20, and that gives us 12 amps. 
Now, in order to determine where that current is, well, again, our current will be in phase with the voltage that created it. So because BC is down here at 240, my current is also going to be at 240 degrees. Then we move on to the C phase current and we'll go through a similar process. We will go 240 volts divided by that 30 ohms, which gives us eight amps. Now, again, it is in phase with the voltage. Our voltage is up here at 120, which means that our current will also be at 120 degrees. So there we go. We solved our three phase currents. Now I'm just quickly going to plot these onto the uh, phasor diagram. So um, let's see right here. That's I A to B here about half the length is I B to C and up here even shorter is I C to A. All right, so we plot those onto our phasor diagram. A little bit to scale there, hopefully. Which brings us to the last part of the equation. Now, we need to solve for our line current. So in this case, we are an unbalanced circuit, right? Each phase has a different impedance, meaning we're not balanced. So our default rules for a balanced delta we cannot apply, right? I line does not equal root three of I phase, and they're not gonna be a 30 degree lag. So what we end up having to do is we end up having to go in order to get line currents. Okay, well, I A, line A. So that means this current right here on line A, right? Following Kirchhoff's current law, line A splits, and it's gonna be the current of A to B plus the current of A to C, right? So because we come down A, and then it splits into two branches, I A equals I A to B plus I A to C. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky. We have to deal with the inverse of the phaser. So because I A to C, we don't know that. We know I A to C, which is up here at 120 degrees. So what we end up doing is because it's I A to C, it ends up, we end up adding the inverse of that, which is down here. This would be I A to C. That would be the inverse phasor, right? Now it's exactly 180 degrees apart. So I A to B would be 24 amps at zero degrees. I A to C would be eight amps at 300 degrees. So exactly 180 degrees out, All right? So we'll do that formula for I A and we'll do I B. Formula is I B to C plus I B to A, and then lastly, I C equals I C to A plus I C to B. Again, looking, B comes in, we're gonna add the current from B to A and the current from B to C in order to get the current going on line B. Now that B to A again will be the inverse, so it's actually this one flowing this way, this right here would be I A, or sorry, B to A, right? The inverse of I A to B, so flipped 180 degrees. And again, we would see I B to C flipped this way, 180 degrees I C to B. All right, so those are my three inverse phasers or ghost phasers or phantom phasers or whatever you want to call them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these onto HV charts and I'm going to add them up. Now those HV charts are going to look just like this. And I'm going to do all my calculations and I'm going to calculate them out. So take a moment, and take a look at those and see what we come up with.
right? So what we got from those is we got 28.84 at 346 degrees. We got 31.75 at 199 degrees. And we got 19.44 at 83 degrees. All right, so that's just like taking, you know, looking at A, we're taking A to B plus A to C. Move that over, that brings us down to here. I might be off the screen. That's I, A. Right, B to C plus B to A, like adding this phaser over to this one, brings us to about here, right at 199. I, B, and then I, C was taking I, C to A plus C to B. So bringing that one up and adding it up to here. Gives us I, C. All right, so it gives us the opportunity we can take a look at those and we get all of these. Um, now I hope this helps. Thank you so much for watching. One thing I really want to point out here is these line currents are not root three larger than my phase currents and they are not exactly a 30 degree lag, right? So they are lagging my phase current, not by 30 degrees, and they are larger than my phase current, but again, not by that root three relationship. Um, so thank you so much for watching. Make sure you check out all my other videos on Delta or any other topics and have an awesome day.